Yeah. yeah, so welcome tonight. Welcome to Understanding Dreams intro and we're so excited that you're with us and, and so uh, we want to start clicking on and get into some of this teaching. Yeah, so we just want to touch on, uh, for those who weren't here last week, just some of the things that we do. We've been running Destiny Strategies uh, for over 20 years uh, and we do a whole bunch of different things. Laurel, maybe you want to share some of those exciting things yeah we, yeah we we love we love seeing god reveal himself in the prophetic in all different environments and and we also believe that this is a time where god is equipping people uh in the prophetic in the prophetic gift and so so uh you know you, you will some of you were part of the prophetic uh hearing god's voice intro night uh last week and and uh, and we talked about the um that we're going to further that uh, over the next few weeks and, and also, uh, you know, we're about uh, ministering spiritual gifts and, and, uh, and our full school that we put on hold at the moment because I think we like to still have people in the room for that uh, is our prophetic activation school. So we're waiting for, um, yeah. for the well, right it's, time it's, it's to easier, find the dates. In, in, what, in the practical aspect of what we do, it is easier to be, uh, it's easier than doing it on Zoom, although we do do that on Zoom, but mm. it's a little bit more, it's a bit clunky. Yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? We probably don't get as many activations as we'd like to in. Yeah. And, and as you can see there, we do personal prophecy, business prophecies, and our spiritual mentoring in all different environments. But, uh, but also the, the fun part is that we get to, we get to reveal Jesus and, and uh, train people in an unchurched environment to go and be effective, uh, even in our um, you know, Christian language and being aware of the the way to present things and especially I think that's um, very relevant for for dreams for sure yes yeah because everyone dreams yeah so we're going to cover some theory and then do some practical steps and uh, so that the theory will obviously lead into the practical and to give you that um, good understanding if you like yeah, so be aware of, actually, can we just take a moment to pray, even though we're not, right, we are in this room together, let's say that we are in this room together, and I just I'll encourage you, just close your eyes, just become aware of the presence of God. Father, thank you. Thank you right mm. now that you come and you, that you meet, that you, you actually cover and surround each person right now, wherever they're at, in, in all these, in all our different houses, Father, we thank you that your peace, your presence, your favour, your anointing comes deliberately to rush into people's lives right now. This is a this is a, a special time. This is a special space. And Father, we thank you that you come to to meet and to reveal and cause even new encounters and awarenesses mm. of your presence and your power and your desire towards each and every one of us and and even in this subject of dreams that's just as much as anything else god you you come to reveal and equip and empower us so we thank you for this next two hours now and we give you all the glory honor and praise in jesus name Amen. thank you lord yeah so why an intro? Well, an intro just gives you a taste of what's to come. Uh, we want to do that so that you, one, you can go away with a bit more knowledge and understanding. And two, if you want to learn more, you can do that over the next uh, few weeks. Mm -hmm. And so it's on Thursdays uh, and we're going to be doing teaching. There'll be examples and uh, we're also going to be doing live interpretation. So. We want to be able to take you through those steps and and uh, if you come back and you do dream then you know, we, you're, you're welcome to send us uh, some dreams and we'll work through them mm, yeah uh, depending That's on good. how many we get that is yeah. we not can't guarantee that we're going to do them all but we'll we'll do we'll definitely do some yeah yeah that's good um so in the past we have done dream seminars and and many of you may have I bought our manuals or, or our, our CD sets. Uh, we actually did a dream seminar over two weekends, uh, f quite a few years ago now, and uh, and so again, it, it's um it, it's and what we're going to do now is is uh, present this to you in uh, after the intro tonight uh, is about you know being aware of um of what's to come, but also we want to expand that on a um for a six hour seminar after the hearing God's voice seminar. Uh, we want to do the the, um, the more maximized dream interpretation and, it, and each time again we, we do this process of, of bring some teaching like we're going to bring tonight 
We're going to give you some examples of, of actual dream interpretation and how we come up with that. But also tonight, we're going to, I think we'll just have time just to do one live interpretation and, and, and show you how that happens. But when we, when we go into the seminar for the six hours, we're actually going to break up into groups to do some interpretation as well. So, so we encourage you to be part of that and, 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 and bring your dreams with you. Um, and and you know and and have an opportunity to have yeah. your uh, dream interpreted and and how uh, and go through and because what we do is we break it up into steps and show you how how yeah. to go through your dream and dreams and and go through the step by step process of understanding what God might be saying to you. Yeah, and, and one week builds on the next, so you'll 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 be building on the the knowledge that you have and. and and not only that, you get to practice between now and the next few weeks um, from what you learn tonight, and then you'll be ready to go uh, when we're back mm. doing dreams. So you'll be ready to go, and you'll you'll be able to give us some great testimonies. You'll come and say, "I had this dream; it was really weird." Yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, I need help. Cool. That's <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. We've actually any time we've talked on dreams, people have said that they don't dream or can't remember their dreams. All of a sudden, it gets unlocked, and that's always yeah, exciting. Does, yeah. I love that. I love that testimony that comes forward. So here are the dates for understanding dreams. As I said, it's after our Hearing God's Voice seminar that starts in two weeks' time, and uh, and so we we do ask for registration just because we want you to commit to the three nights. But this registration includes our Dream Manual ebook. And, and, and that will help you to, it's, it's mainly the theory content, it's got a few examples in it, uh, but it, it will help you to, um, uh, you know, to, to uh, look at the theory afterwards. And yeah, it's a reference. So it will give you a lot of reference points mm. and you can say, oh, what, would that, what was that about again? And you can go back to the book and uh, go through the notes and say, hey, I remember now, I know what to do. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Yep, so there are the dates there. Um, so what's coming up, um, if you were part of last... Uh, last Thursday, we, we heard, you heard about our mini seminar, the three nights for hearing God's voice. Again, these are the dates for that. So in starting in two weeks' time, uh, again, we ask you to register for that because we want you to commit for the three nights to get the full impact. And But if, if you've already registered for Prophetic Activation School 2020, you come free uh, to this one. And also past students have their usual special rate. Uh, drop us an email or a message if you can't remember what that special rate is. <laughs> secret code <laughs> no. and also of course the understanding dreams and mini seminar over three thursdays the, the dates are there so you know we're we're um yeah we want to utilize this time of uh of uh of uh not being able to meet in big gatherings and and uh and hopefully zoom is becoming your friend it's definitely becoming our friend even though sometimes it, it doesn't tell us what it's doing mm. <laughs> and uh, it's yeah, um, that's right. and it goes i thought you knew yeah. that and no we didn't <laughs> so um zoom i hope it's becoming your friend and uh, and, it, and it's a good way to meet and connect and uh, and do these um these times of building and growing i believe it's a very important time that we that we utilize to build the things that god has for each and every one of us and build the, the expectation build the faith do, build that new ram, ram realm build that realm. new realm of authority in in our lives and uh, and and see what god is it's almost like we're building in the private place we're, bu we're building in the secret place and when we get to go out and i'm um, being groups again we're going to be surprised at the anointing and the building and the spiritual authority affect an atmosphere that we're going to be carrying because we've been in this 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 cave time almost like a reminder of a cave of, of a dog where they were trained and equipped for the mm. for the greater cause yeah, yeah i just realized the actual three nights of training is about the same price as the book by itself the dream manual yeah yeah the, the hard, well. yeah the hard yeah the hard yeah that's right that's it yeah wow. <laughs> i'll go <blame> myself <laughs> Yeah, so um, yeah, so just this is how to register. Um, so we're just doing this by um, it's manually, I guess. We're not really doing events online for you to register um, this time. Uh, but it's it's um, yeah, email us or Facebook message us, and uh, and and the way to there's information there on on our on our website of either to uh, direct deposit into our bank account or you can use the the, um, the donate button to um, to use PayPal for your credit card details. So, so there's a few ways there if um, 
if this is all going a bit fast for you, feel free to email us or Facebook message us. Many of you uh, found the link on Facebook. There's two ways to communicate these days. Uh, of finding the link, uh, you know, sometimes we email or um, and if you email, if you RSVP email, you get the email link sent to you or if you RSVP on Facebook, which many of you have, 35 I think it um, RSVP'd, then you found the link on, on Facebook. Loving technology. It's good when it works. I love yeah. It. So yeah, yes. so there, so um, uh, it's awesome that you're utilising the chat uh, box at the moment, and uh, and keep uh, doing that, and and ask questions as we go along because we're going to cover a lot of uh, a lot of ground, really, a lot of intro, a lot of foundation for this subject, uh, and uh, so uh, we've got Josh moderating the chat box for us and and also he's gonna he's gonna pull together the questions and, and when the question time comes up so that if, so that we can you know answer them as effectively as possible so but make sure you put your cues in the chat box yeah well we might take a few questions along the way as well because sometimes you know, people if they don't put it in straight away they may forget so we encourage you to do that write your questions in the box and, uh, and we may well answer some of those along the way mm. as well. Yeah, it's yeah, good. So, it's good, good to so have as we direction. said, the method is that we're going to do some teaching now. We're going to give some examples and, uh, and we're going to answer some questions and also do a live interpretation, which will be fun. Yeah. So let's go. All right. So we just want to touch again on ways God speaks because we need to understand how God speaks to us. And, and many of you have probably seen this from last time, but God will speak to us in pictures. And sometimes our language, the way we speak, will give away often how we may most often recognise God speaking to us. So like some people will say, I see this, I see that. So they're a seeing sort of person. So they're, they're people that will see pictures. So those pictures, they could be uh, like a movie, watching like you watch TV, or they'll have moving pictures. So God will unfold this, uh, these pictures to them. Well, they could be still like a photo or a slideshow. Uh, so those pictures can also be in colour or black and white. And, uh, and for some people, they might see a picture of writing on a wall. And uh, for other people, it could be a cartoon. You might get all of these. Uh, it could be a sketch. It could be like a stick figure. Uh, I get that sometimes. Uh, uh, I'm asking God a question. I'm seeing this stick figure. And, uh, or sometimes, it, you know, it's for me... I find God speaks to me normally in black and white, and often it's blurry. Mm -hmm. But I know it's God because I've practiced so many times and I understand what he's saying. For other people, they, they hear a still small voice. So they're, they're people that say, I hear what you're saying. Oh, yeah, I recognize that. They're, they're those sort of people. So they're more hearing style people. And the other people say, I see, I see. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I hear what you say. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, it gives it away when you think of it like that. It does. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, so there are people that will, will hear a still small voice or they'll, they'll, they'll get this like a, almost like a spontaneous thought and, and that's their, the way they hear mm -hmm. from God. And, and so, you know, a lot of us, we, we say, oh, God told me this. Or I heard God say this, but it, just because they heard it doesn't mean they actually heard it, if you know what I'm saying. I heard God say this, but it was actually a picture in black and white or it was whatever. So God will speak to us in different ways, and, and this will apply to dreams as well. So other people, they just sense something. And we've had people that come to our school and they say, I don't, I don't hear anything. I'm not getting anything. I don't see any pictures. I never get pictures. But I know this. But I'm feeling this. So their, their way of hearing from God is almost like a sensing, a feeling or an impression. And, and, but yet they know, they have this knowing on the inside. So that, they'll hear from God in that way as well. And, and so, you know, there's many ways that God speaks to us. That's just some of the ways. And uh, obviously the Bible, you know, you read the Bible, God will light up a scripture or there's some, certain words that jump out at you and you think, wow, that was the verse for the day. And you just know that that was God highlighting something. And, uh, and I'm sure we've all been there. Uh, but it's just, it's learning to practice those things. And, and dreams is the same. You know, dreams are, the Bible calls them night visions. They're things you see at night. And because uh, normally we sleep at night. Uh, but the Bible in Job 33 
It says, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds. So that's when you're going to have that dream or that night vision. It's a picture in the middle of the night that goes through our mind. Yeah, so it's important that we understand how God speaks to us. And some of you, just as we went through that, may realise that oh, I tend to get pictures or I tend to notice this or I hear God in this form. And so it's good to recognise that. And if you practice a lot, and if you come to our school, you'll experience all of those methods because we encourage you to, to uh, hear God in all sorts of different ways. Mm. And, uh, and what we found over the years is someone will come in and they say, I always get pictures. And they'll come to us you know, at another session and say, I'm not getting any pictures. I can't hear God anymore. And we say, well, why don't you listen and see if he talks to you in a still small voice or you sense something. And away they go. They've got that worked out and they're learning to recognize God in a different form than perhaps what they had previously. Yeah, that's good. So dreaming is very important. In the Bible, there's over 380 scriptures on visions, dreams, and imaginations. And so the, this is all sort of lumped together. Uh, visions, as we said, night, there's night visions, there's, there's uh, external visions, there's internal visions, there's dreams, which we, is what we do. At, we, we call that, uh, you know, when we're asleep, we're dreaming. So that's the, the focus there. But also imagination. And our, our mind is very active all the time. So our imagination is, is uh, very busy all the time. In fact, if you sat down for five minutes and said, I'm not going to think about a thing, you would not be able to do that because your mind will, is always feeding thoughts of some sort. And so what we learn to do is we, we learn how to recognise that. We learn how to, to understand what the visions are or what those dreams are and what those imaginations are. And so if there's a lot of scriptures on its subject, it's normally a pretty important one. And we're going to recognise that as we go through tonight, mm. how important dreams are and, and the actual, uh, how that impacted people's lives in the Bible. It's quite, uh, quite amazing. But dreams are an indirect voice of God. It's an indirect voice. Uh, and sometimes, you know, someone will, will come up to us and they'll say, oh, I was thinking about you the other day and, and, and I was thinking this. And you might get that from three people in the space of, you know, three days. And it's like, I think God's trying to tell me something here. And so dreams are a bit like that. They're an indirect voice. You know, that person, those three people have said basically the same thing and, you know, uh, not, not all related or there at the same time, if you know what I mean. But it's an indirect voice. You recognise that as a way that God's speaking to you as an indirect voice. And so dreams are much like that. But we'll, we'll see how that unfolds as we go along. Uh, dreams are for both believers and, and non-believers. Everybody dreams, and uh, we're going to touch on that as well. Uh, in the new age, you know, there's a, there's a lot of dream interpretation out there, and uh, you know, you can tune in your radio there every now and then, and you'll hear someone interpreting dreams and doing all sorts of things. It's a it, it's it's a common subject in the new age area, and because people recognise there's something here, there's something here. I want to know what this means. And, uh, but I, I'm here to tell you, God had that first mm, and, and, and his way is best. Mm. And some of the new age are uh, things they have, like they, what they call, I think, dream uh, dictionaries and, mm. and different things. And which suggests that whatever you dream uh, has, has a specific meaning. And, and I guess there, there are, there are, it's a bit of a gray area actually, and we'll go into it in a lot more detail. Um, but uh, I believe that a Bible dictionary is probably not, Correct. Uh, is a dream dictionary. Yeah, like dream dictionary. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. A dream yeah. dictionary is not quite correct um, in, in that way. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to uncover that as we get along. And, and I think one of the things, as you said there, you know, the new age has been out there interpreting dreams and, and whatever. Uh, and, and some Christians are put off because they go, oh, I don't want to go there because that's new age. Well, it's actually old age. Mm. It was God's originally. And these guys have just hijacked what was God's plan. Exactly. And if God's people are interpreting it from God's perspective rather than from yeah. that other perspective, well, how much more powerful are we going to be? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So 
a picture, you know, we say a picture is worth a thousand words and in, in our dreams, that's true. So it's, it's a picture language. Dreaming is about these images that we see uh, and, you know, we can, we, someone can tell us a story in a thousand words, but if you just show us the picture, it'll save you a lot of time, energy, and we'll get the understanding of that much quicker. And that's what dreams are like. They're pictures that go through our mind. They're this night vision that flows through our head. And uh, Abraham had pictures to hang on to. You know, when God gave him a promise, he gave him pictures to apply to that promise. You know, you, you, you're going to have children like the, the stars, you know, and nobody can count the stars. Uh, but he would recognize every time he went out there, he had this picture to hang on to. God said, I'm going to have children like the stars. And, and you know, I'm sure that took a, a while for him to get that around his head. But that was a picture and he hung on to that and that was something he saw uh, every day. You know, the guy lived in a tent. So he would have seen the stars at night and every day he went out and he kicked the sand. And that was another picture that God gave him. You're going to have children like the sand, the, 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 the number of the sand. So this is huge numbers. Mm. They're, they're fantastic pictures that he could always remember. Very simple. And if God just said, look, I'm going to tell you this and he writes out a thousand words for him, it would have been harder, but he's given them this picture to hang on to, which makes it very simple. We do the same thing in advertising. You know, we, we, uh, pictures are what get our attention. Uh, if it's all just writing on a wall, we probably won't even read it. So pictures are very powerful. That's what we're saying. And in the Bible, uh, as we've got on the screen there, many people had dreams. Joseph had a dream. We, you know, we all know about Joseph and his, his Technicolor dream coat. Uh, but he had these dreams and, and for him, it was a life-changing dream. And it probably didn't necessarily go the way he thought it would when it first happened. Uh, but in the end, he saw what happened and it was based on that dream in his life. Abraham had dreams. Solomon had dreams. Gideon had a dream. And, and you know, it, the people who interpreted Gideon's dream were actually his enemy and uh, they were able to interpret his dream. Yeah, that was fun. We, that, we that's a funny one. Unpack that. Yeah, we do. We do that over the next yeah, few sessions. So so that's funny. quite funny. That one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the, all of these people, you know, their lives changed, and history was changed because they had a dream. They recognised that this is something important in my life, and I need to pay attention. And it's the same with us. Uh, and, and so, if we recognise this and place importance on our dreams it will bring change and, and revelation to us. So God wants to bring us to wholeness. Uh, and one of the ways he does that is through dreaming. So God, well, that's, that's God's goal, is to bring us into wholeness in every area of our life. And, and so uh, dreaming is a part of that. There's a lot of other components that will help to bring you to wholeness. You know, there's all sorts of things. There's, you know, counselling, there's medical doctors, there's, you know, all sorts of things that will heal you in, in various ways. But the purpose we've got here today is that in your dream, you can have your emotions healed. God will highlight something that will uh, bring healing to your emotions. Your body can be healed because you've had a dream. And we'll touch on that over the next few weeks as well. How your body can be healed because you've had a dream. Your spirit can be strengthened and matured because you've had a dream. Your character will be developed by you understanding the dreams and, and the application of what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Relationships can be restored. You know, a lot of things can take place because you've had a dream. God's given you a dream and, and you work through that process and understand what he's saying. And then you can, you, you can be healed. You can bring healing to other people. And you know, all sorts of amazing things will happen. Mm -hmm. That's good. So science tells us that dreams are necessary for both our physical and psychological health. In fact, they've done tests over the years and that show that if, if somebody has a sleep and they, get, they keep being woken up you know, after you know, an hour or two, that after about three days, those people will really start to go crazy, literally. They'll have a lot of anger. They'll be, you know, all these emotions come up and because they're not getting that deep sleep that's required. And part of that deep sleep process is having dreams. Mm. Now, for most of us, we don't remember them. We don't even know we had them. 
but we all do. And scientifically, it's very important that we actually have that deep sleep and have those dreaming sessions. So we've got to have, and it's normally we have about three a night as a rule. Um, many of us wouldn't remember them, but that's okay. And you know what I found? Over the years, you don't have to remember them. It, it's good to, to want to work through them, but if you have three a night, you write them all out, you, you probably uh, work through those, you're not gonna have much of a day left. So you don't have to remember them all because God is so good, he'll give you another one tomorrow. Isn't that good? So if you don't get the first one, he'll give you another one. Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. So God speaks to us through dreams. Uh, and, and saying things our mind, as a general rule, can't comprehend. So because we, we think we know ourselves and, uh, and really we don't know ourselves as well as God and probably not as well as our spouse. Um, we all have blind spots um, and, and, you know, we, we need to recognise that, that we do have these blind spots and, and, we, and we see things through our own eyes and, and often uh, that's a bit tinted. So we want to be able to understand that our dreams are going to say things to us that sometimes we won't comprehend. Or we think, no, that's not right. That's wrong. And so we need to understand that what my dream is saying, it's trying to bring me some revelation on something. And I need to be open-minded about it uh, so that I can work through that process. I hope that makes sense. So dreams reveal far more accurately then we can reveal ourselves. So it will, the dreams will tell us the truth about ourselves. Regardless of how we see ourselves, our dreams will highlight aspects of our lives that are more true than what we think. And so I've got their dreams contain a valid message from our heart or from the Holy Spirit within our heart. And so it's our, our, our spirit aspect, the heart of us that wants to talk to us. And it's also the Holy Spirit speaking to us mm. so it's under, it's important that we understand that that there's a valid message coming that's either from my heart or it's from the holy spirit um which is really the two are joined mm. or should be yeah that's good and like the yeah it's a valid message in a sense because well some people sort of say i had a weird dream it must have been the pizza i ate, i ate last night you know <laughs> many people say that right but in actual fact all dreams are valid and, and they're valid in the way that, that, that God is, is counselling us or helping us understand our heart condition or whether it's the struggle or the, or the belief or the, or the faith that we've got or, or it's the Holy Spirit. It's God within us and, 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 and God is part of our Father also speaking to us. So we want to say that all dreams are valid, I believe, from God's perspective. Yes, yeah. So yeah, we're just going on there and referring to the Bible. Many events occurred in the Bible because of dreams. We touched on that before. The Old Testament, the saints believed in the dream so much it changed their lives. And in fact, if you read it, probably a third of the Old Testament there's, is in some way related to dreams that people had. Um, Abraham, Joseph, uh, you know, Solomon, there's a whole bunch of them. And uh, we're going to touch on some of those over the next few weeks and uh, look at what their dreams meant, why they acted that way, you know, what actions they took, what did they learn from that process. Uh, so that's exciting. So in the New Testament, you know, Jesus had a dad because Joseph had dreams and he acted upon them. Jesus' dad, Joseph, his human father, had a dream and he acted upon that. And we're going to have a look at that in more detail over the next few weeks as well. But that's a pretty interesting subject. And it really shows the, the strength of what his actions were mm. at that time. Yeah. So it's pretty important. Yeah, in those days, they understood, you know, they understood the yeah. dream. They understood the message. And for some reason, you know, over the generations, we've lost that understanding or that power to do that. But God wants to restore it. Yeah, exactly. And part of our culture is that, you know, anything that we can't see or feel, it doesn't exist. Yeah, and so that's, that's, that's part was, of the issue. That was There's Aristotle, no, wasn't it? Yeah, he, he, um, yeah. he blessed us with that knowledge that, you know, that sort of stuff, spiritual stuff, dreams and madness, that they're not necessary. Yeah, so the there's, you know, there's a lot of things that have disappeared from our culture, which are in a sense uh, starting to come back in. 
uh, not necessarily from the right sources, unfortunately, but they're, they're things that we need to be aware of. You know, you go over to seas and, and to some uh, other countries and, you know, they have a great spiritual awareness. may not be the right one, but they have a spiritual awareness. They know there's some spiritual uh, power, higher power, whatever they might want to call it, that is out there and they need to have a connection with. Mm. And, and, uh, and dreaming is the same. They recognise the same thing. So in Job 33, 15 to 7, it says, In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deeds and conceal pride from man. So this is Job writing here, but he's saying that, you know, it's in that deep sleep time, then God can speak to us. Mm. So that's, that's important. So 1 Kings 3, 4 to 15, I just want to read this because I think it's important. Uh, and it's talking about Solomon. And, and we know uh, Solomon, wealthiest man that ever lived and still the wealthiest man who's ever lived. Uh, and God really blessed him in that area and gave him a lot of wisdom. And, and that's where we get uh, a lot of, uh, you know, Ecclesiastes and all the, the wise uh, sort of, a lot of the psalms and things yeah. he he was he contributed a lot so it says here now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there for that was the great high place solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar that's a lot of work yeah. a thousand burnt offerings at Gibeon the lord appeared to solomon in a, in a dream by night and god said ask what shall i give you Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, because you've asked for this thing and have not asked for a long life for yourself, nor for asked for riches for yourself, nor asked for life of your enemies, but you've asked for, your, for yourself understanding to discern justice, Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before, nor shall any like you arise after you. That's pretty powerful. And I'll also give you what you have not asked, both riches and honour, so that you shall not be anyone, there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. Mm -hmm. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and commands as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Then Solomon awoke, oh my gosh. and indeed it had been a dream. Wow. And he came up to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, offered up burnt offerings, offered peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. So he was pretty wrapped about this <laughs> dream. You know, this is exciting stuff. Not only am I going to get what I've asked for, I'm going to get other things. And I'm going to now go and celebrate with God, burnt offerings, peace offerings, and with my uh, staff and servants. So he, played, uh, he, he, he paid a lot of attention to what the dream was saying. So what did Solomon receive in his dream? What, what he was struggling with at the time. So dreams, we need to know, to be able to understand what our dream is saying to us, we need to understand what is the setting of what's happening. What's happening in my life at this particular time? Because that's going to be significant to what you're dreaming about. So we need to know what is the setting. So what happened? Solomon had taken over from his father. David had died. Solomon was now king. He'd taken over from his father, and now it was his job to be king and rule the people. Pretty big job. And so this was the issue that he would have been struggling with. You know, my dad was one of the greatest kings ever. How am I ever going to fill his shoes? You know, he's so wise. Um, you know, he, I've heard all those stories from years ago, and he you know, built the people up, had the, all these guys that were desperate, you know, dropouts. All, all those sort of weird people, and yet he's able to raise them up to be good people. Um, how do I fill the shoes that he's not only filled for those people, but for the kingdom, which he's then, you know, his, his dad had, had set up 
Well, God had placed him in that position as king. And now it was Solomon's turn to take that role. So there's a lot happening here. And uh, he, he had a lot to think about. You know, this was his job now. He was to fulfill that. And uh, he's probably had a bit of training and his dad would have said, look, you know, you're going to be king one day. You need to understand these things. But it's easy to say that. But when you're in that role and you don't have that person to fall back on, not quite as easy. So he would have been struggling with this, these thoughts. So, and so that's the setting of his dream. How do I rule these people? How do I do the right thing? How do I manage to be a good king? Mm. And his dream was saying, God is going to give him guidance and instruction. He's going to give him the wisdom he needs. He's going to give him, a, a, there's a promise in there. There's also conditions in that dream. If he does this, then that's going to be part of that process. And, and so there was a lot in this dream for him to work through. And, uh, and, and so not only was there things in the dream that he had to be aware of, there was actions he needed to take from the dream, things he needed to do as part of that to get the fulfilment of, of, of that dream. Uh, and, and that's important. And it's the same with us. So what we want you to, to understand is that there needs to be a setting around a dream. Whatever, if someone comes and says, look, I had this dream 20 years ago. This is what the dream was. Can't remember anything else. Don't know what I was doing, where it was. Then you're not going to get an interpretation because the setting is often key to the interpretation of what the dream is. Mm -hmm. I just want you to understand how important that setting is. And it was the same here for Solomon. Uh, we have a, a question. Yes. Okay, so this question's from Jessica. Okay. And Jessica's asking... Uh, what about when you have a dream that builds on fears and anxieties you have as a result of concerns or negative situations? Like when you wake up angry at someone for something that has not happened, is that God or is that the enemy preying on your mind when you are vulnerable? That's a really good question, Jessica. And, uh, and we're actually going to cover some of those sorts of things in the, over the next few weeks. And uh, you're actually right here where we are yeah i see that just for you jessica <laughs> yeah so it, it is a good, right here. It, it is a good really good question and uh we want to touch on that in a lot of detail because there's having those types of dreams means there's things that we need to work through and if we go back to the purpose of the dreams it's to bring healing to our lives it's to bring uh you know restoration build character all of those sorts of things mm. and, and the fear uh, the fear in dreams, the, you know, the people that come up, the emotions that come up, we're going to cover a lot of that sort of thing. Um, and, and it's, uh, in a sense, this is the question you're asking, is can the devil give, give us nightmares? Is that, is that part of it? And what is a nightmare? Uh, what do we do with these? These are very good questions. And, uh, and we're going to go into that in more detail in the next few weeks. But just, uh, I just want to answer that in, that in a very short answer is that all dreams are from God. Now, there are some exceptions, but as a general rule, that's how we need to view it. And, and we, we probably won't have time to go through that tonight, mm. but over the next couple of weeks, we will. But yeah. that, is a, that is a very good question and a very, uh, you know, most people ask that. They want to know, yeah. you know I had this nightmare. What does this mean? Yeah. You know, is the enemy up there? You know, he just wants to beat me up. Is that what's happening? Mm. But more like, yeah, the question to ask is, what is God saying through this nightmare? What is the, what is the wrestle going on mm. here? Or even there could be an area of healing. And, uh, and this is sort of being oversimplified, of course. But, but there is, God does use nightmares to help us uh, to, and, and bring attention to things so that then we can grow and heal and learn from, from that situation. So that's, definitely the oversimplified answer and because this is a very big subject we'll yeah, probably yeah. spend the night on it actually um but yeah, yeah so um awesome question um you know many people ask that yeah what, what is a nightmare and, and how can god be in that well god brings wants to bring healing and and um you know highlights brings things to the surface at times to to bring healing and breakthrough and bring attention to, um, mm. to some areas for our lives to, to grow, grow in. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, Jess, if you can meet, um, register and come over the next couple of weeks, we're going to cover that in a lot of detail. And, uh, and, and 
we will help you to understand mm -hmm. uh, what that, uh, how God speaks to us in that way, and yeah. what the result will be. And yeah, that's exciting. And it's good if, if you if you if you're game to bring your nightmares <laughs> to yeah. have them. Um, you know, bring bring the doozies yeah. um, to um to to the to the seminar to have um to be interpreted for sure. One thing, one of the things about nightmares is that mm -hmm. you usually remember them. That's it. So that's you know that's a that's a that's a bit of a plus. And uh, yeah, and it's a bit of a yeah, um, yeah, 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 being aware that that God's using it that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. So we'll just keep going. Uh, Josh, was there any other questions we should address at this stage? Uh, no, none at the moment. Okay. So we'll just keep going there. Dreams are about understanding the symbols in the dream, uh, uh, like uh, we we're just talking about. So symbols, they're all different, and we see different symbols as we understand those symbols so you know the the same symbol where two people can have the same symbol in their dream and have completely different meanings which is one of the reasons why we think a dictionary is dangerous because it, it, it's not a set thing you know it's they they vary depending on the person what is this picture i'm getting this you know when i see this picture this means this to me but for someone else it's completely uh, a, a different thing mm. so that's important mm. This is why we say it's dangerous to interpret other people's dreams because the, the person having the dream, they are the one to have the interpretation. And, and we're gonna to touch on that uh, as well because yeah. that's a big subject. And, and, but we can help you with your getting your interpretation. That's what it's about. Mm. Yeah, so in some ways we don't actually interpret your dream, so to speak. Like we don't say, oh, this dream means this, this and this because you know, the dictionary says this or, or this has to mean this and because that's what it means to me. But we actually draw the interpretation out of you. So what we skill you with in this, uh, in this subject is how to draw the interpretation out of the person. So the obvious example we always say, so if someone said, you know, if, if two people say that they're, um, they've just dreamed about a dog, well, one person's going to say, for me, that means my best friend. The other person's going to say, that's the most fearful animal I've ever known. So right there, one symbol is they've got two completely opposite meanings. So, so if you dreamed about a dog, for example, it's my job to say, what does that mean to you? What is that dog like? Or, or what does that dog mean to you? Uh, rather than saying, oh, well, a dog has to be this. And so, yeah. so that this is what we, uh, this is the skill we hope that you um, that you will catch and over the seminar because it's about drawing the interpretation out of the person, not telling them what the interpretation is. Yeah, that's right. That's good. Yeah, yeah. This is their dream. Mm -hmm. So in Genesis thirty-seven nine, we we read about Joseph having a dream, and he dreams about the sun, the moon, and the stars. And, and so, when we dream, we normally have symbols that we recognize. So for Joseph, you know, the guy lived in a tent. When he got up in the morning, it was probably because the sun was shining through the tent and uh, it woke him up. When he went to bed at night, he, he was probably looking at the, the moon and the stars. So they're things that were very familiar to him. And, uh, and, and, you know, we understand his dream now because we can look back at what was happening uh, or what did happen. But for him, when he had that dream, uh, you know, he placed some significance on, on it, but, you know, he rushed out and shared his story with people and that didn't necessarily go down as well. Uh, so we need to be wise. Uh, but he did have symbols in his dream that he related to. They made sense to him. And, and that will be the same for you in your dreams. They're personal. Dreams relate to symbols we recognise and understand. So in Psalm 16, 7, it says, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart instructs me in the night seasons. <laughs> seasons. So if David is saying here, I'll oh, bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart's gonna tell me that what this counsel is and, and, and I'll understand what God is saying to me in the middle of the night. So, and that's what we were saying before, that our dream is personal to us, but through that, it wants to bring healing to us. It wants to bring healing to our emotions, to our body, to our uh, development, our spiritual walk, our character, all of those aspects. Uh, our dream will be highlighting things that need attention or would improve our life if we paid attention mm -hmm. to them. So David is saying that there. 
Uh, just another just question. Yep, go for it. Um, so Gail was asking um, around that uh, teaching related to nightmares. Does that apply to children as well? That's a good question. Yes, love that. it, it does. Mm. Yep, and uh, and we're going to go through that as I said, but but it's actually for the if if someone's having a, if a child's having a nightmare, then there's an action on behalf of the parents to help that process so that that'll go away. Mm. Uh, uh, but uh, it, very briefly, a, a nightmare is highlighting things that need attention, and they need attention now. Mm. So it, it it's a uh, and we can help you with that. Uh, to how do we work with that, and what's the actions we need to take? Mm. Uh, so we're going to work through some dreams there, Gail, in a minute, which might help you. Uh, but again, uh, that's a that's a bigger subject than we're going to have time for tonight. And that's we good. but we will cover that that's in a lot of subject, detail. Yeah, and yeah. and as and parents and grandparents, if you're aware of of you know children's dreams, it'd be really good to be able to workshop those in the seminar as well. Yeah, yeah, happy to do that. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. So Acts 10, 9, it, it's a story of Peter who saw a sheep with these unclean animals come down. And, and so Peter had to understand what these symbols were and what did these animals represent? So animals can represent our emotions. And, and again, we're going to touch that on, uh, on that over the next few weeks. Uh, but Peter had this uh, trance or a, a dream, if you like, uh, in the day. And uh, we're going to have a quick look at that now. Just want to read through here. So you've got the, because we need to understand the setting. Once again, the setting in the dream is most important. And it says here in, in Acts 10 verse 9, the next day as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became hungry and wanted to eat. But while they, were, they made ready, he fell into a trance, which is like a, a vision, if you like, and, and so and he saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at four corners descending to him and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, to him Arise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have not eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times and the object was taken up into heaven again. And it goes on and says, now while Peter wondered within himself what this vision which he had seen meant, behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. And so what's happening here is, is um, Peter has had this dream. And so we want to work through that. What's happening here for Peter? So... He has a dream and then he's wondering about it. So he's, he's, he's thinking, he's trying to work out what is the message in this dream? What's going on here? This doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't understand it. And, uh, and so the setting is that Peter was actually at a place where he really wasn't sure where God wanted him to go next. And you, you can read that in Acts 10. Uh, but he wanted to know, he, he was wondering, well, where do I go from here? And it was like he didn't have an answer. And so he was just waiting there. So you know, he, was, uh, he, he was up on top praying on top of the house, um, you know, getting a bit of vitamin D. <laughs> and, uh, and then he has this, this vision or this trance, uh, a, a daydream, if you like. And, uh, and so the setting is, is, that's the setting of his dream. And so from that, we can pick out some key words that are key to that particular dream. So things that are key there are unclean animals. There was a voice in the dream, uh, in, in the vision he had. So there's some of the things he, he struggled. And so he, these unclean animals, he, he recognised they were unclean. They're things that we, we as Jews, we, we, don't, we don't have anything to do with those things. We stay right away from those. 
And so he was struggling with this. And, and the, in the dream, it's saying, you know, rise up and eat this. And he's saying, no, 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 that's not me. No, I don't do that. That's not, no, my religious teaching is different from that. That's not how, no, we, we don't do that. So he's struggling with this against his own understanding and what he'd been taught. You know, he had this religious understanding over the years as a Jew, this is how we operate. And God is saying this is going to change. And so what does he need to do? The, the, in the dream here, it's actually the answer is there for him. Arise and go and trust that this is the right thing. And so there was an action that was required on, on the dream. And so he, he was struggling with this. And, and I believe that one of the reasons he was wondering what's going on here is that because this was against his natural thinking. This was, he couldn't comprehend how he would eat these things or have anything to do with them because they were considered unclean and not part of his uh, Jewish upbringing. And so there was this internal struggle happening. Uh, but he uh, trusted that, that this was God. And he arose and went. And... And we know he did go with those guys and, and uh, become an apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, so he was human and his mind was saying, this is wrong. We, we don't eat these unclean animals. This is, you know, so this, his mind could not comprehend what the dream was saying, but he had to work through that process. Um, did God appear in the dream? It says there was a voice there. Um, we don't know whether that was God, an angel or what it was. And oftentimes there'll be there'll be someone or a voice in our dreams, and it could be God, it could be a voice, it could be whatever, um, it could be part of you. So, and we're going to go into that in more detail as well. But it's God doesn't always appear in a dream, but God gives us dreams. So we need to recognise that this is a way that God will speak to us. We have a, another question. Awesome. That's from Nivez, and she's asking, is sleepwalking related to dreaming? That's a good question. I don't know. We'll get back to you. Yeah. Actually, we have, I know that we have, uh, that's been asked before. Yeah. I'll, I'll have, have to, to look in our manual. I'll have to have a look. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to, yes, refer you, to my manual. Do you have our first. dream manual already, Nevis? If, if you don't, um, yeah, we'll have to have a look at it. Yeah. Because I know that's been asked before. Very yeah. good. We'll, we'll come back to that one. That's a good question. Any others, Josh? Uh, no, not at the moment. So with Peter's dream um, and our dreams, our dreams are probably trying to answer questions that we've been asking. So that's why the setting is important. It's these things that, that are, we're mulling over in our mind. You know, do I do this? Do I do that? What should I do next here? So there are issues that we're struggling with. And, and our dream is coming to give us revelation on what to do in that situation or what the answer is through that particular thing. Uh, and, you know, what is the next step perhaps? So there's our dream is they're trying to give us answers and which will bring change to our lives in some form. So they are personal. 95% uh, of dreams are subjective. They're about me as the individual. Mm -hmm. It's my dream. It's about me regardless of who's in it. Now, there is prophetic dreams as well. Uh, and, and some of those, we're going to touch on that as well. Um, but as a general rule, we want to view dreams as a message from God for me, the dreamer. And that's, that's very important. And dream the, the meaning of the dream, a bit like prophecy in the way that may not just have one meaning, it might have multiple layers to it. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so symbols or pictures. The, the, the spirit life is about pictures. It's a universal language. Uh, you know, you can go into any country in the world and you see that little man at the traffic lights, you know whether to walk across or you don't. You don't have to read it. And, uh, and that's really good when you're overseas and you don't speak the language. <laughs> Believe me. Um, and so pictures are a universal language we, and we all, we all understand that. So the dreams will speak to us in pictures. And it's understanding what these pictures mean to me as an individual. And that's very important. Uh, as Laurie mentioned before, you know, we, if someone thinks of a dog and it's their best friend and someone else, they've got a completely different meaning of what that is, that's going to have a big bearing on what the interpretation or what God is saying to them in their dream. So the, the pictures 
uh, one of the keys is that the pictures are individual to you as the dreamer. And, and we need to remember that. So we can ask questions like, what does this symbol represent to me? What does this symbol represent to me? If I'm dreaming about a dog, um, we'll just stay on that uh, example. If I'm dreaming about a dog, is that, is that my best friend? Is that, you know, I, I go home and my dog is always there. I love that dog. You know, it's my best friend. I want to go for a walk with that dog and just spend, you know, time with it. So it, it's a representation of love and affection. It's a representation of, you know, my great mate. Uh, but for someone else, if, if, if the, the, the neighbor's dog is, you know, barking at him and jumps the fence and attacks him and all that sort of stuff, there's, there's this fear element. I don't, want a, I don't want a dog. I don't want to have anything to do with that dog. Uh, so it's what does that symbol represent to the person? So that's, that's key. And it's also, uh, we'll, we'll go into people in dreams as well. Uh, I'm not sure if that'll be tonight, but we will talk about that as well because that's interesting also. Got um, two more questions. Awesome. So the first one from Anna is, uh, what about uh, if you're having the same kind of dream uh, repeated over years and years? Oh, awesome. oh that's a good we one. Love that's a good dreams. question. That's good. Good questions, guys. Yeah, Anna, that, that's an interesting question uh, and quite a common one. And, and what happens is that often we'll have a, a, a dream which has a message and, uh, and then we'll have another dream. it will have the same message, but with different symbols or pictures. Mm. And, and that's biblical as well. Uh, we remember the, you know, the seven sheaves of wheat and the seven fat cows, same meaning different dream pictures. Mm. Uh, and so, but what that represents as a general rule is when you're having the same or a similar message coming through, it means you haven't acted on what that message mm. is. It's still more action. And, yeah, and so sometimes that's, it's usually because we haven't understood what the message is saying. Mm. And so the next couple of weeks will really help you there because we're going to unpack a lot of that sort of thing. And actually, and it's a little bit like prophecy in the way, because some people, they, they come to our schools, or, you know, um, for the open prophecy sessions, and they said, I was here a few months ago and I got exactly the same prophecy. Why why am I getting exactly the same prophecy over and over again? And I'm there from other areas as well. And dreams can be a bit like that. It's yeah. like God saying, I want you to grow in this level. I want you to change. I want you to build and be strengthened and, and we're not going to move past this till till you know till you're able to get victory in this situation or build or grow in this situation so god's so kind in that way and and uh, uh you know and, and it's asking god the questions over um, so that we can you know it's not that and sometimes it's you're on a journey of growth and uh, not necessarily you're blatantly not getting it at times it's it's like you you know you're going through the stages of growth yeah absolutely and sometimes you 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 know we, we do need to hear a message i'm the same you know i'll have similar dreams um sometimes and it's because i haven't necessarily recognized the full message in the first one and that's what i was saying before you know god is kind enough that he'll give you another dream if you don't get it he'll give you different pictures you don't get that, it'll give you something else. Because he just wants to bring us to wholeness. And, and so nothing wrong with having the same dream a number of times, but we want to be working towards what is the answer here? What, what action do I need to take in this scenario? But that's a really good question. Okay, uh, the next question is, uh, what if you have had a, you know that you've had a dream, but you can't remember it? How do you go about that? What should you do? Yep, uh, we're gonna cover that in the next few slides. Or thereabouts and we're just going to keep going so if we can do that that would be good um yeah yeah what how do we remember that's the question and um, i want to try and fit that in tonight so we'll just keep going through there if that's okay we'll answer that one as we go along um so, so most dreams are about us the dreamer regardless of who's in the dream we may dream of other people but they're just symbols a representation of the message that is coming through to us they represent a part of us. So I might dream of my brother or I might dream of, you know, a policeman or something else. Uh, but that's a representation to me of part of me. So even though there's other people in there, it's a representation. And so just for example, if I dream about a policeman, it, that could represent there's an authoritative side that may need to come up. So maybe I'm not being authoritative enough. I'm not taking charge in that particular area. 
Um, you know, it, it, I might dream of my uh, my father. So what is my father? It, you know, was he loving and kind? Was he angry and abusive? And so it, that's the message that's coming through from that particular symbol. And, and so, you know, it doesn't mean I go and tell my father off. I'm not saying that. I, I, I'm saying it's got nothing to do with him. He's just a representation. He's a symbol to me about part of my life. You know, I've got there as a school friend. What, what was that? Was that school friend, was he a great mate? Did we get on really well? You know, was it a, a good, good camaraderie there? Or was he a bully and I didn't like that guy at all? You know, do I feel like I'm being bullied now in this particular situation I'm in? So there's symbols that will come up and, and, and they're a representation of part of us as the dreamer. So these are the sort of things that we want to look for. What is the setting of the dream? as we mentioned before. So we need to know what, what, are we, what are we struggling with? What are we trying to work out at this, this juncture in, in our dream, in our life? So our dream will be related to the setting of where uh, uh, our life is. What do the symbols mean to me? So what is that symbol I'm dreaming about and what does it mean to me as an individual? What is the interpretation from within me? So you know, as we work through the symbols, we can get an interpretation but you will get that interpretation and we will help to bring it out of you. And then the other thing is, okay, I've had this dream, there's a message here, so what do I need to do? What action do I need to do to, to move on or get healing in this area or, or what do I need to do about this particular thing? If there might be some sort of an instruction, you know, what is the action required to move forward? So I just wanna give a couple of examples. This was a dream that, uh, that I had many years ago and uh, I'm going to read it through with through through it uh, there. And, but I want you, uh, just based on what we've learned, to help me interpret this dream. So this is the dream. Uh, someone was trying to convince me to invest my superannuation into bottles of wine. I wasn't convinced this was a good idea or a good investment. So that's my dream. Not not a long one. Uh, sometimes the short ones are good because it makes it easier to interpret them less symbols. So that was my dream. So what do we need to know to interpret this dream? And you can add comments into the chat there. So that's the dream. Someone was trying to convince me to invest my superannuation into bottles of wine. And uh, I wasn't convinced it was a good idea or a good investment. So what's the first step? We want to know the setting. So what is the setting? What are the messages saying? What's the messages there, Josh? Uh, yep, so um, we've got a couple of questions relating to the slides before. No, it goes okay. further than this Okay, all right, so, um, uh, so one of them was, who, who was the person to you? Um, that's uh, Kathy Tanks asking, who was the person to you in the wine dream? Yes, yep, that's good. And uh, what was going on for you at the time? What does the wine mean to you? Do you like wine? What does wine mean to you? Good questions. And they're the exact same sort of questions that I asked at the time. So this is the setting of the dream. So this was a, a, a number of years ago. And so the setting was, um, someone was trying to convince me to invest my superannuation in the bottles of wine. And the setting was that this was before we started running pathetic events. So that gives you a bit of an idea of the setting. This is before we started doing what we're doing now. So 20 years ago. Yeah. More than a couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. A bit more than 20. Yeah. So what else do we need to know? So that's the setting of our dream. So what else do we need to know? You can make some comments there. We need to know the symbols, which um, Kathy said. So who, who is the person? Who's the someone? That's a really good question. And, and uh, I actually will come back to that one. So this is, this, is, um, this is the symbols there. Someone, which is good. Superannuation, bottles of wine and investment. So they were the key, key words or key symbols in the dream. And so what do these symbols mean to me? So, that's, so what could be bottles of wine? What might that represent, do you think? What is, it, what is investment? What is superannuation? What could that represent? So we want to know those questions. 
So they're the sort of things that we ask for ourselves. So what do we have there, Josh? Uh, we have um, God's, uh, the vineyard could be like God's people, uh, new wine, new season, new wine skins could be your future. Yep. Uh, superannuation representative of your future. Uh, end result of a harvest, wine could be abundance or, or intoxication. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and they're all good. They're all good uh, comments. That's great. Yeah, so let's have a look what these symbols mean to me. So there's someone I, I, I put as God. So someone was trying to convince me to invest my superannuation into bottles of wine. So my superannuation to me represented part of my life and part of my future, uh, as someone rightly mentioned. So it's my time, my effort, um, you know, part of my life that I'm going to invest into bottles of wine. So what could bottle, bottles of wine represent? To me, it represented the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Which bit? <laughs> the intoxication. <Holy> Spirit. <laughs> of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the Holy Spirit is, is referred to as you know, uh, wine uh, in the Bible. So, you know, the, that was what it represented to me. And so the investment, the investment is something you want to get a return on. And, and so someone was trying to convince me to invest my superannuation, my time, my effort, part of my life, my future into things of the Holy Spirit. And I wasn't convinced it was a good idea. I wanted a return. Is there going to be a return if I spend my time, effort, energy, my future into this, am I going to get a return? <laughs> well, we're here. <laughs> so uh, we are getting a return. You know, it, it's, uh, that was, uh, I, the action I needed to take was, yes, keep moving forward. So that gives you some idea of, of what those symbols were to me, how I interpreted this dream. So the dream is saying at the bottom there, be convinced if I invest my time, my effort, my superannuation or part of my life into my future, into the Holy Spirit, will it be worthwhile? Mm. It will be worthwhile. Yeah. And God was bringing, using the dream to bring confirmation that it was the right thing to do. Yeah. But you can quite easily, you know, think, well, you know, other people are better at that and, or, you know, or maybe we should exactly. just, just do something else or, yeah, so yeah. it brought a lot of confirmation. Yeah. So I hope that gives you some uh, indication of, uh, of just putting the whole thing together, if you like, on, on how do we interpret that? My symbols, and many of you had similar things, and, and that's not unusual. Um, and, and so the interpretation that I got out of that, be convinced if I invest my time, effort, my life in, into what we're doing, it will be worthwhile. And so and sometimes the action is not, it, there's things to do, but sometimes it's not a physical thing. It's an acceptance of something. Mm. So in this case, it was an acceptance of, yes, this is right. And, and the action as well there in that case is, yes, keep, do, keep going. Mm. And, and so, you know, we kept moving forward and doing different prophetic events and, and, and various things. Um, Margaret's asking, how long did it take you to get the interpretation? Uh, that's a good question. Sometimes it can take a while to interpret our dreams. This one here I thought was pretty straightforward for me because uh, I guess I, uh, you know, sort of understood. I had a little bit of an understanding of what dreams meant and how to work with them. And, and, uh, and I pretty well knew straight away what those symbols represented. But I, I would say I probably spent 15 minutes working through that and, uh, and, and getting that right. Can we fit one more in? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, do you interpret every dream or was it just that particular one? No, I don't interpret every dream. Um, I, uh, I used to do about one a week. Uh, I'm probably not doing that many now. Uh, probably should. I think, and, and sometimes it, it seems um, to it's go in, seasonal. Yeah, it mm. seems to go in stages, I think. Uh, and, and part of that process, uh, it depends how much or what's happening in your life too, I think. If there's a lot of, there's a lot of intensity, intensity happening, uh, then you, I think you tend to dream more because you're trying to find those, uh, those answers, that interpretation, that message that's coming through. Mm. There's def definitely seasons in our life where there was a lot of transition 
where we would decide to dream and know that God would speak to us and we would both dream and then come out the next day with, wake up the next day uh, with, uh, with uh, you know, a dream that we helped each other and, and talked through the interpretation. Mm. So, so God, you know, will, you know, he does, does speak to us through dreams and, uh, and we, can, we can actually choose to dream and, and, uh, and, and allow God to do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a key point that you mentioned too, is that if you've got somebody that you can talk to about your dream, your spouse, for example, um, they will tell you sometimes what those symbols are. Because I mean, we think a certain way. And, and as we said before, we all have blind spots and we don't necessarily see all aspects of our life as it really is. And, and so our spouse can help us there. Uh, you know, I've had dreams sometimes and say, oh, this is, this is a weird dream, this happened. And I'll always say, no, that's you all over. Said, no, not like that. She says, yes, you are. I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it, what I'm saying is that sometimes other people having an input, someone we, who knows us very well, uh, can help to bring that interpretation out of us. Yeah, because often, our, our, as we said before, our dream is talking to, to us sometimes about things that we're struggling with and, our, and struggling to comprehend because we don't think that way. So what was the next step here? Uh, just to trust my dream and act accordingly and uh, convince myself is a good investment. And I want you to be aware too that this is, uh, can be a form of warfare. If you've had a dream or a message from God and, and things are going wrong or the enemy's you know, bringing all these th sort of thoughts to bombard you, that, that can be a form of warfare because, hey, I've got this message from God. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I don't care what else happens. Mm. So here's the pizza one you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, sometimes we might say, well, I watched this movie and then I went and had a dream about it. What is going on there? Or I had a pizza last night, so I know I had a dream. Uh, it was just because of the pizza. You know, I shouldn't have had pepperoni. Mm -hmm. But that's not what it is. It's, it's about a, a new set of symbols new pictures that we've got, which will come up in our dream. So it's a new set of symbols uh, that we just, yeah, we mentioned that. It's good. So how do we become a dreamer? So how do we do that? You've got to decide that you want to do that and, and that you need God's help. And, and I can tell you as, as part of our life, no matter what we're going through, there's always things that we'll be working on. There's always things that will come into our lives that we need to sort through. And that's life. And so we need to decide that dreaming is going to be important and value God's input. So keep a pen and a paper next to your bed. Be prepared for a dream. And, and I, I can guarantee you, if you're prepared, you will have a dream. You may not remember it the first night. You may not remember it the second night. But if you, if you decide, I'm going to bed, I'm going to have a dream, I'm going to be ready, uh, you will have a dream and you will be able to wake yourself up enough to write it out. Now, it is important that you put the light on or have some sort of light on there because otherwise you'll write all over the top of everything and you won't be able to read it in the morning. I can, uh, I've done that many times. So <laughs> yeah. you can put the light on. Mm. Uh, and then that you can practice, you know, what do these symbols mean? And you might have a dream uh, the first night and you think, well, I'm going to work through that and, and, you know, you don't get anything or you might get one symbol and you think, well, I know what that means, but what is everything else? And as I said, you know, God is kind, he'll give you another one. So tomorrow, another dream mm. and you can work through those things. And, uh, and so look at the setting. What's happening in my life this time? So once you've written it out and you've been able to work through it, pick out the keywords. What does that mean to me? And, and what, what's happening in my life at this time? What are the things I'm struggling with? Or what are the things that keep coming up for me uh, that maybe need attention? What are those weaknesses in my life that perhaps keep coming up that I wish they didn't? And so working through that. And so... As I mentioned before, be careful about who you share your dreams with. You need to have someone that you can trust and that who, who's going to help you work with that. And draw the dream out of you, not tell you what the dream is. Yeah, yeah. So they want to be drawing you. The, the person who had the dream has the answer. They have the interpretation. But sometimes it's, it's not to where ask specific questions that that will come up to give us the right interpretation. And, and you've got to have the right person to be able to do that with. You can do it on your own. Uh, but sometimes it's easier and, and uh, with someone else. So don't strain to get the message from the dream because if you don't get it, that's okay. You'll have another dream. Isn't that good? <laughs> so here's another dream uh, that I had. And so we'll, we'll just work through this quickly. Uh, I was in a cafe for lunch with some other people. 
I went up to pay the bill and I gave the guy $20. Lunch came to about 10. And the owner said he didn't have any change and could I come back? So I went and put some things down on the table and I went back and he worked it out and he, that he actually owed me $10. So we, the group of people were uh, to meet at some other place and now we were going to be late. So that was my dream. So again, what do we want to ask here? So what is the setting of the dream? So what was happening for me at that time? What was going on in my life? Uh, what was happening was I was considering doing a course and at the time it seemed like a big outlay. It was a lot of money. Um, and I thought, you know, do I want to do this? Don't I? You know, so I was struggling with this. It looks really good. Don't know if I can afford it. So this, this is the setting. This is what was happening in my life. So my fear here is, is this okay? Or are they going to rip me off? And so that, that was what happened. So when I went to pay the guy, uh, is it going to be good or is it not? Am I going to be ripped off? So I'm, I've got these fears inside of me. Do I spend the money? Don't I? Do I do the course? Don't I? So what was the action that was needed here? The action was that I needed to get rid of that fear. And so what's the result? The result from that was that I got more than my money's worth. So it, it was a good good way to go. So my fears, I just get rid of that fear and I move on and I got a good reward for that. So again, we want to look at what is the setting of the dream? What are the symbols and what do they mean to me? What is the interpretation from me? Within me, it comes out of me. So let me work through that. What actions do I need to take? And so in that particular example, it was it was really getting rid of the fear, not letting that overtake me and, 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 and convince me otherwise. And so that was, even though it's not a, it is a physical action, but it, it, it's more than that. It's a, it's a mental action. Uh, so I had to take control of those thoughts and, and manage that process. So I want to give you an opportunity to ask some more questions or what have we got there, Josh? Some comments? Yeah, yeah, we've got a few. Um, so I'm just going back. I've been um, collecting a list. So yeah, okay. well done. So we've got Ruth. Uh, Ruth was asking, um, what about dreams when you feel you've been there before? It looks very familiar, although you conscious, although consciously you don't remember being there. That's a good question. Yeah, well, sometimes we can have uh, dreams that are, in a sense, predictive. Uh, or the other way where it's like I've been there, but I haven't been there, uh, and, which is what Ruth is saying there. Uh, and, and so it's almost a sense of deja vu. Mm. Uh, and so it, it's recognising what is that symbol? What, why is that coming up for me? So the same thing. So working through those symbols. Mm. If I've been there before, how did I feel at that time? What was happening in my life at that time? Because sometimes what can happen is, is we'll, we'll, we'll have a dream of a dream we had or we had a, we'll have a dream of, of some past uh, place or people uh, or it could be something we thought we were there but we weren't. But there's, there's usually a feelings or emotions attached to that which can be representation of what is happening now in my life. Mm. And so, for example, you know, if I dream about a house, uh, and it was a childhood home that I lived in, you know, when I was five or six. Um, how did I feel at that time? Was it, was it a good experience? Was it a bad experience? Uh, and if it was a good experience, what was good about it? And am I in that same position right now? Do I feel like this is a good experience? And what's good about it? And what is similar? So it's almost a, a, a recollective dream that's bringing back those same emotions and those same solutions if you like if it was if it was, a, it was a tough time you know maybe i was at school at that time and you know uh there's people at school picked on me i felt like i was bullied uh do i feel like in my work environment now i'm being bullied and and, and if i am you know how do i overcome that so it's almost like a recollection style of, of dream even though you may not have been there there there's a sense of that so how did i feel at that time so emotions can play a big part in our dream as well. So I hope, I hope that helps. Did you want to add to that? No, it's great. That's good. Yeah, uh, next is, uh, can your dream be a message for someone else? Uh, yes, it can. 
but it's not usually. And, and unfortunately, so what's the percentage you said before the ninety six percent. Yeah, ninety five percent of dreams uh, are, are really about the dreamer, regardless of who's in the dream. There is there's definitely a place of prophetic dreams or mm. predictive dreams. And that depends on other your people. Realm. It depends on your realm of authority. So it's in the same way as a prophetic gift, in the sense. So. Uh, you know, if you're if you've got a realm of authority as a prophetic person and you're overseeing a church or a ministry or um, you know a certain area or a country, then then God might speak to you in a dream for for that specific group or someone in that group. So the same sort of dynamic for dreams. So so that you would you might get a prophetic dream for someone that you that is part of your realm of authority and your realm of influence. But most of the time, that that represents that there's a symbol that it represents rather than for the person. Yeah, yeah. yeah look, I, I, I believe the best way to handle that is always see it as a subjective dream first. Mm. So how does this, regardless of who I'm thinking about or see in this dream, yeah. how, does that, how does that person, um, what am I getting from that symbol or that person mm. uh, as for my life? And, and that, maybe that won't help. Mm. Uh, but that's a starting point. And, and look, oftentimes people who have prophetic dreams, um, they will know when this is the right time. But you, it, oftentimes it's, it, it's a process and, and they may get that same dream three or four times and they look at it in many different ways and it just doesn't fit. And, and so it's working through that process in the right way, as Lowly said. Yeah, we actually quite often have people come or, or contact us or and, and people in, part, in you know, part of our group or whatever just say, I had a dream about you last night. And, and, then, and then when we drill down to it or, or you know, start asking the questions, it's, it's not about us at all or me at all. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, um, even though it's probably a fantastic dream half the time, I, say it's, uh, I would like to think it was about me. Uh, but most of the time it's about the prophetic or God you know, awakening the gift in the person's life. Yeah, so it's a representation is what you're saying yeah. uh, of that person what what is it about that person uh it's a representation of that uh, a little bit like we talked about before you know if i'm dreaming of, of a, a brother or a father or a family member what does that person represent to me it, what's the first thing that i think about when i think about that person yeah and, and so that's a representation it's probably part of me because we're we're really about parts and, and it's getting all the parts together yeah. And so it's understanding that process. Um, I hope that's helped. But we'll go into things, uh, we'll go into more detail over the next few weeks. But happy yeah, to answer that. Yeah. Hope so we've just helps. got a little bit longer. So we would actually, we've, we've asked one of our team um, to um, allow us to um, interpret uh, one of their dreams. In, in, in a, we've given you a lot of examples of our dreams that we've already interpreted. Um, but we've asked one of our team, um, Jody, um, shortly is going to um, come on up, so to speak. So is there any more questions before we move on? Josh? Uh, yeah. Um, do you need to take into consideration your like emotions, your feelings when you wake up? Does that impact the action you need to take? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, it will. And, and if you, as we said before, if you're having a nightmare, then that's, that's got your attention because of the emotion attached to it. So our emotions are important. And uh, again, that's something we'll go into in more detail over the next few weeks. Hi, uh, we can see you. I just got rid of the share. Now we can see you, that's awesome. Very good. So, um, so if um, any more questions, Josh? Uh, yep, the next one is, how do you know if you have the gift of prophetic dreaming? Uh, good question. That, that will be uh, revealed over time. Uh, and realm of authority, I yeah, think that, yeah. that would fit into that as well. Yeah, yeah. so that it, it's, a bit of that's practice, um, as with anything, and, and being under authority, making sure it's done the right way. And, uh, and you know, that's why there is realms of authority. So things are done the right way. Unfortunately, what's happened in the past, you know, someone has a dream and they think, oh, I've dreamt about my, my uh, workmate. You know, uh, uh, I need to go and tell him what this dream is and what he needs to fix. 
uh, and he goes and talks to the guy and the guy thinks he's a loony uh, and because it's not actually for him it's a representation of that person's life it's just whatever that person meant to him as a symbol and, and so uh, unfortunately that sort of things happened quite a lot uh, and uh, and that's why it's important to understand your realm understand like if, if i'm dreaming about my children for example then that's my realm of authority so there's more chance that could be a, for that person because i have authority in that area as part of the family uh, if i'm a if i was pastoring a church for example then i would have authority in that area because if i'm dreaming about somebody there uh, that you know that could be for that person but as a general rule even so the first place to start is with the person who has the dream the prophetic dreams you'll find that that will reveal itself over a period of time and uh and, and you know as i said before god is kind enough to give you a number of different dreams if you don't get it the first time so that's good okay so any others josh uh no Okay. Uh, we would like to take a group photo. Would that be okay? If you're if you're famous and want to don't don't want people to see your face, or if you're in uh, you want to call it witness protection or something. <laughs> I'm joking. I, oh, maybe not. Uh, feel free to um, blacken yourself. Or um, but if you're if we can have your wonderful faces, if you're happy to be in our team photo, that would be wonderful. Yes, yes. Come on out. Come on down. Just a and um, uh, Josh, are you okay to do that? So, um, are we, is everyone on the screen? Can you tell Josh? So, yeah, I just might need like a little couple extra seconds to capture everybody because they've gone off to two. Things, so I'll have to take two photos essentially. Okay. Yep. So. Um, so what we have to do is do a crazy um, wave and hello and, and, and make everyone that's not here miss, it, miss us um, from not being here. And so um, we'll probably have to do what, a long-term three minute wave. Are you nearly ready, Josh? Yep, yeah, okay. okay. Hi, Yay. everyone, Bye. wave. Bye. Keep waving. Yay. So good to have you, so good. Wave, 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 keep waving, keep waving. Tell us when to stop, Josh. Tell us where to start. There, Josh. Yay, are we done? All right. <laughs> All done. All done. Are, we good? are we good, Josh? Yes, yes, finished. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being part of our group photo. That is awesome. Okay, so what are we up to now? Okay, so we're going to do a quick, um, quick live yeah, interpretation. So and this is going to be an example of what... Um, what we're going to do a lot more in the seminar that you can bring your dreams. We ask that you um, pre that you write down your dreams that you would like interpreted at the seminar, and uh, and and send us send those to them. So it's over three nights. Send those to them. Uh, you know, um, prior to so that we can you know not uh, so that we can have the clarity there and maybe ask you some questions beforehand to uh, you know, to to drill down really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we've done this is for um, Jody. Are you? Can't find you. There yeah, she is there. Ah, oh, awesome. Yep. So, um, yep. So, talk to us, Jody. Hello. Hello, Hi, everyone. Good. Hi. good, good, good. Um, so, yeah. So, <laughs> so Jody, uh, you've had a dream. Uh, can you tell us what your dream was, and then uh, we'll work through it as a group. Yeah, I've just got it written down here. So, um. So I had a dream that I, a couple of nights ago that I was underwater, deep underwater, and I was asking God to help me to get to the surface um, because I knew that I would need to breathe. Um, and I could see people above me, but they were too far away to get to. And he said to me to just swim along where you're at. And as I moved as though I was going to swim where I was, some gills opened up on me and I could breathe deep underwater. So um, initially I was like, facing sort of straight up and down. And then when he said that I had to turn, but it was sort of slow-mo. Yeah, okay. So that's good. So we've got a, a little bit of an understanding. You're underwater there trying to breathe. 
And mm. uh, so what was, what, what, so we want to have a look at the setting of what was happening in your life at that time. What are some of the things that you're perhaps thinking about working through? So yeah, what's the setting of your dream? I've been seeking God a lot on um, sort of a lot of, to get a lot more clarity on some things yeah. um, and how to go about them, if that makes sense. Yeah, right. that's good. Yep. Okay. All right. That's good. Uh, okay. So what are some of the key words there? Uh, so let's have a look. You were deep uh, underwater. So uh, mm. what, what's that represent to you, being deep underwater? Um, for me, it's, it's actually quite a happy place. Um, it's sort of escape where there's no pressure, like it's a whole other world, if that makes okay. sense. See how that key is right, so important. So for Jody, being underwater is a happy place. How many would think that she's drowning? Yeah. And, yeah. and it's a negative place, but in actual fact, it was a very happy place. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So that's good. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so, uh, you, you knew you needed to breathe. So that would be a key aspect. Yeah. So uh, breath is something, you know, we, we need to live. So sometimes the meaning is quite straightforward. You know, uh, uh, breathing can represent, uh, and again, Joe, it's your meaning. So yeah. uh, what does that mean to you? Um, yeah, I sort of still just meant like, yeah, the, the ability to continue to live, yeah. <laughs> you know, oxygen. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what breath does. Yeah, you got to breathe. Yeah, so I really good. didn't feel, yeah, sorry, I didn't feel panicked at all. Yeah. Even though no I didn't panic at all. Yeah. So, yeah. no panic at all, which could indicate the fact that there was, it was, you were relaxed. Yeah, it was a safe place, sort of. Yeah. yeah. Happy, safe place. Yep, that's good. Okay. Uh, and so there was other people there, that, but they were sort of too far away and it wasn't necessarily. Did that represent anything to you or was it just that you knew they were there? No, I just, I could see them way off in the distance, but I've no idea who they were or I don't mm. feel that they really represented anything, just that they were too far away to call out to help. <laughs> yeah. So there's that other people in your world there in that sense. But yeah, well, I had, it sort of made me then just ask God, you know, like if they're too far away, you don't instantly go, oh, I need to beckon them. Yeah. Or get them okay. attention. But yeah. Yeah, right. That's good. So even though there was people there, that they, they weren't people that you could ask. So you went straight to God. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, and so you ask God to help you breathe. Um, yeah. Or you asked Him, yeah, about getting to the surface, mm -hmm. and God said, "Just swim along." Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And he just so said, "Swim where you're at." So. And, um, it, but it wasn't until I actually moved. So it wasn't until there was action that the gills came. Right. Yep. Oh, so it wasn't so, until you started to move where you're at. Yeah. So the movement, was the movement rushing to the top or was it, what do you clarify that? Um, so you said swim where you're at. So then I just, I went from being in the um, vertical position to horizontal. Like I just sort of rolled yeah. forward like you do if you're deep under and uh, to go to swim off. Yeah, okay. So yes. Basically stay where you're at and, um, yeah. yeah. And sort it wasn't of, until you started that movement. It, it, yeah, it wasn't until I actually heard from him like swim where you're at and then I chose to act on that. So yeah. I wondered if it's something to do with faith. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Yeah. An action, a um, response. Yeah. An acceptance, even. And then, so what happened then? You got, because you took action, you got gills. Yeah. And then I, it was like I could breathe quite easily. I knew I didn't have to worry. And then I just, that was it. I woke up. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so you're, so what you just said there a minute ago about faith, you wondered if it was faith. So if you, and you took action, so you're putting your faith into action, and then you're getting the result. Is that? Yeah, I've been because that's one of the things I've actually been really seeking God on is how to walk in faith more. Yeah. Like I, you know, and the difference between faith and believing. 
Yes. And so I wondered if this initially had something to do with that, but and maybe it's just learning to learning the different way. Of well, that would make sense because, and again, it's your dream. But you, you got up here, you, you asked God to help you, and He said, "Just swim." So He's already told you what to do, and as you took action, then the gills come, and you're able to breathe. So yeah. that sort of makes sense based on what you've just said. Yeah. So, you know, hear what God is saying, trust him in that action, and, and you know, the result will come. Yeah. Does that make sense? Is that? Yeah, no, that's, I feel like that nailed it. <laughs> okay. It's good. Cool. So see the yeah. different steps, everyone. So see the different steps that we just went through to draw out the interpretation. Yeah. So we want to know the setting. We want to know what are the key words in there? What 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 do those represent to the person with a dream? And what action is required? So, you know, for Jody there, um, you know, you want to know the, the setting is, you know, I'm struggling with these things. I need more faith. I want to know how that works. Uh, and hear what God is saying. Take action and then the result will come. Yeah. Or you, you've got the means to for that to, to move forward. And so, and, and again, there was no no emotion or no no bad emotions in there, Jody. If that's right, no, it was, none. It was your happy place. So, uh, a sense of relaxation, uh, a sense of of uh, no pressure. Um, Come to me. Mm. A place where you're happy, and you know God can can talk to you. Awesome. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so we want to do a lot more of that over the next few weeks over the seminar and, and I invite you to be part of that. And, uh, and, and definitely if you want to be part of that to register, but also um, to forward your, write, you have to write out your dream and uh, that you want interpreted and, uh, and email that to us prior to the evening so that we have a bit of a heads up. And because and sometimes, you know, that, that, uh, you know, interpreting a dream can, and asking the right questions can, you know, can be quite, um, you know, what you say, like a mundane sort of, you know, it takes a bit few, quite a few steps to get through it. So yeah. we have a bit of a heads up and actually send some questions to you prior. Yeah, we send you then, a sheet. Then it sort of helps you to, because yeah. um, sometimes when you ask a question, you go, oh, what is that? I wonder what that really means. I'm not sure. They give you some time to think it through and, and work it out. Hmm. So we've got a couple of minutes. Josh, any questions there? Uh, yeah, we've got a couple. Awesome. So, if you're having a dream where you cannot talk and you feel like you're being attacked and then you start praying in tongues and rebuking and calling on Jesus, is that a spiritual attack? Uh, could be. Could be. Again, uh, it could well be. But again, we, we want to we wanna work through it on a natural sense first. And again, that could be the case, but it could be something in the natural that you're struggling with, that where you feel like uh, you know you you don't you're unable to have your say. So are you in a situation where you feel like you can't have your say because your mouth is whatever it was? You were, what what was it again? Um, it was uh, the person's feeling like they're being attacked. They're praying in tongues, rebuking, calling on Jesus. Is this a spiritual attack? Mm. Yeah, with the first bit. Oh, they couldn't talk, sorry. They yeah. couldn't, yeah, talk. couldn't talk. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So yeah, does that person, and again, we can work through all of those symbols, but does that person feel like they're in a position where they, they're, they're unable to talk or they're not, they feel like they're not being heard? Mm. They feel like they're in a position where um, no matter what they do, they're, they're being attacked and, and they don't have the ability to express what they need to express. Mm. So the, the mouth not being able to speak is uh, is that a representation of, of that sort of environment? Mm. And sometimes the response can be, well, I do feel like I'm being attacked or I do feel like, it, you know, that even like the enemy's trying to attack me or there's a warfare there, but then at, then uh, our response needs to be from God, doesn't it? So, so uh, it, I, I find sometimes if I feel like it, I've, I've had the dreams of, um, you know, where the enemies got into my where it looks like the enemies in my dream but in actual fact god's highlighting to me that i'm i'm perceiving a um an attack but in actual fact god's got a 
God's got an agenda. God's got a got, got a strategy to uh, to for me to face that and bring forth and, and release mm. and declare over that situation. So it's almost like it's it's um, it, for me it highlights uh, where I'm positioning myself or where I'm seeing myself at this time. I'm under an attack. If I mm. feel like I'm under an attack, well then I, my job is to then. God might want to position me higher. He want you know where like the obvious thing at the moment. We're not meant to be functioning according to the COVID nineteen rules, so to speak. We're meant to be seated in heavenly places, seeing what God is saying and declaring and 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 finding ourselves living from a position of faith where God is supernatural and wants to do exceedingly above more than He can ask than we could ask or think. And, and so there's that positioning there sometimes that our dream highlights that okay, I'm not sitting and I'm not positioned exactly where God wants me. So God, how do I mm. reposition myself? Yeah. Yeah. So again, that's that we want to work through all those symbols um, and, and see what the interpretation is. It could be that that was warfare in that particular environment, mm. or, or uh, uh, the dream could be saying, "Look, oh, you maybe you do need to do more warfare in this." Mm. Again, it's the, the, the there's more information needed to yeah. be able to work through that, but that can happen. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Um... Does God speak to us um, through dreams because we don't listen any other way? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good that, the, the, the answer to that is yes. <laughs> Look, life gets busy and we, we, you know, we get distracted and, and, uh, and oftentimes, oftentimes if God spoke to us during the day, our mind would say, no, that's, that wouldn't be right because God's trying to say things that our mind doesn't want to accept. And so oftentimes the only way to get to us is when we can't dismiss it. Uh, and so God will tell us things uh, in our dreams that in a sense he can't talk to us about during the day because we're not in a position or we're not allowing ourselves to hear what he wants to say. Does that help there? Okay. Um, next question. Um, if someone's having a dream and there's a lot of bad emotions and fear, what should they do with that? Again, you need to look at the setting. Same process. Uh, the action, it, it, the action will uh, will be needed there on that particular dream. Mm. Uh, and sometimes the action could be maybe there's some counselling needed. Maybe maybe there's some issues there of the past that need to be sorted through. Uh, and if you go back to earlier on, we talked about the purpose of the dream is to bring us to wholeness. And, and look, most of us, most of us are the same. You know, we we may not we might have a, a bad leg, for example, and uh, think, oh, that'll heal itself. I'll be all right. Uh, and then we go mountain climbing uh, with our bad leg and, and wonder why it gets worse. Uh, and uh, where we probably should have gone to the doctor, get it looked at, and he'll tell us how to fix it. And, uh, and then once that's healed, then we can do the other activities. And it's a bit like that with our dreams. Sometimes we're, we're, we're dismissing things because we think, oh, that'll be okay. But God is highlighting things because he's saying, this is something that I want to bring healing to. This is, it, again, this is, I don't know the details of the dream, but in, in principle, it works this way. Uh, it, there's something there I want to give, bring healing to, or there's this fear that you're carrying that, and we want to get rid of it. And so sometimes the the, the negative, uh, you know, the negative, the fearful sort of dreams are the best because they're highlighting things that that have really got our attention. And we're going to talk about one of yours that you had. Yeah. Um, about babies dying. Which will yeah, we'll Coming go through and blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was an awesome dream, <laughs> and it really was. When you hear the outcome, when we when it got to that, yeah. uh, so we're going to go through that uh, over the next few weeks. And, and but sometimes those what, what I'm saying is the 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 fearful, scary, nightmarish, you know, dreams that the ones where we wake up with a with, in a in a bundle of sweat and, and you know everything soaking wet and and. You know, you, you don't just wake up, you sit up really quick and or they can be the best dreams because there's so much to work through and, and there's there's just so much healing will come out of those things. Mm. 
I know it's not, we, we don't want to go that way. We think, oh, you know, this has got to be really bad, but it's actually really good, provided we work through that process. So I hope that's answered that question. We've probably got time for one more question. Um, no, all finished now. All good. Awesome. Okay, so I just want to share um, our screen again, just to um, remind you of what's coming up. So um, yeah, so what's coming up <laughs> is um, is the Tell Hearing God's Voice seminar. Uh, it starts in um, two weeks time, and there's the dates for you. And uh, and then of course the Understanding Dreams mini seminar, which uh, tonight we've actually done a lot of, you know, it's been I think probably um, almost 90 minutes, maybe 70 minutes of of us talking and giving examples. But we're going to that it's going to be handed more over to you and more practical um, over that time and and more opportunities to workshop your dreams. We just wanted mm. to give you some obvious examples of how we how we um, work through the dreams. And, and do a lot more of like what we did for Jody tonight. Um, so that'll be fun. It is, it is a lot of fun. And um, so, but next, so in, in two weeks time, and uh, so we've virtually got something on almost every Thursday night for the next couple of months, but next, uh, so next week is, is our prophetic mentoring group for past PAS students. Some of you are here with us tonight and, and all the people that have registered for 2020, if, um, if you're part of that, you'll, you know who you are and we'll see you next Thursday. But in, but in a fortnight's time is um, we start the Hearing God's Voice and it's a lot of fun. We, um, every, you know, everything I say is fun, of course. Uh, and, and so it, again, it's a, it's a, um, a time of teaching, uh, but also uh, activation. We break up, if you were here last week, we break up into groups and you have a team leader and you get to prophesy, ask God questions. Yeah, and, ask God questions. And God will talk to you and you can share. And develop yeah. the gift. Yeah. Yeah, it's a practice. So, yeah, the Zoom has amazing breakout rooms. Um, yeah, and so that's for the next, uh, that for the 30th, the 7th and the 14th. We ask you to register because we want you to be committed to that. Part of your registration will include uh, two uh, MP3 downloads and they're actually our practical uh, recordings on, on prophetic activation and also on the, uh, the uh, if you were with us last week, we did like a, a journaling, how to ask God uh, activation. And so we've actually got that on CD as well. And we found that, you know, people practice that on a regular basis. It's just going to hone the gift for you and mm. give you clarity and confidence in hearing God's voice. Yeah. So that yeah. uh, includes that. So one of the keys is asking questions, is that what you're saying? Asking questions. God's just so into asking questions, yeah, isn't he? He loves, he loves us, loves that we would ask questions. And, uh, and then, of course, Understanding Dreams will be after that. And, uh, and, and again, we ask you to register for the benefit of uh, you know, being, we want you to be committed because it's going to build every night and you will get a lot out of it. Um, and that, uh, that also gives you a, our dream manual. Um, ebook and um, and and it's um it's going to have so much more theory that we're not going to get to cover. Yeah, we won't cover all that. Um, yeah, so that that was actually from a two weekend seminar, the manual, and um, yeah, so many of you probably have um, you know at least seen that, and some of you may have bought it already. But yeah, so that's basically um what the next um month is about. Let's take advantage and let's let's be aware of this time and season of what God wants to build. He wants to build us in people that are hearing his voice with confidence and clarity as people that would even understand our dreams and, and I feel like it I feel like what God is on this is not just for ourselves as his as his people, but also understanding the strategy of how to draw a dream out of someone else. And I feel like that God wants to use that even and especially for our unchurched people that Many are dreaming at the moment, and uh, because of the the conflict or the or the, the different, you know, the you know what we live in at the moment, and uh, yeah. and that's awesome yeah. because God is revealing Himself through dreams. Yeah, yeah. We get people come up to us in all sorts of places and say, oh, "I had this dream. Can you help me with this?" Uh, and so we're able to ask them the questions that draw those uh, the, the revelation that God is revealing to them, and uh, you know, it's awesome. And and, and once you've done that a number of times and you know how to do that, it, you know, people just volunteer themselves sometimes and say, oh, I had this dream. It's just really weird. And you can ask them questions. 
And so, it's, you know, it's a, it, it's a lot of fun. And, and then, you know, the meeting comes and they're, they're just so excited that God has spoken to them in this way and they've now got it. And, you know, I need to do this. Okay, great. I'll, that'll change my life. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I think that's what we're up to. This is how you register. Uh, go to our website or, or, and it gives bank transfer or um, PayPal credit card options to register. And um, yeah. yeah, that's it's great. So just putting it down so I can see your wonderful faces one more time. If, is there any questions that we need to do a quick or are we good, Josh? Uh, no, don't have any more. So okay, that's great. Well, we'll leave it there. Thank you so and, much for uh, joining us. God richly bless you. Bless and you guys. Uh, we we pray that you know it's ignited something. Expect a dream. Expect a dream. I know that many of you are going to message us or email us and go, "Oh my goodness, I dreamed like I've never dreamed before." Yeah. Because once you start talking about it and pushing to God about it, it happens. Yep. And so it's get awesome. That, get that paper and pen beside the bed. Don't forget the light. <laughs> that's why they invented those light pen things yeah, yeah, yeah. bless right. you bye bye bye